A few days ago when Intel announced its Meteor Lake features, it was pretty clear that with such good AI features, there is no way that AMD can make a good comeback. And while that seems to be the case partially, a lot of mainstream consumers, specifically gamers, are not going to benefit a lot from that. Yes, it's true that Meteor Lake will feature one of the most powerful iGPUs we had from the blue team, but the sad thing is that it won't be coming on the desktop. This is where AMD is taking its opportunity and making a big move that it usually misses when it comes to graphics cards. If you remember, AMD recently added Ryzen 7045HX support to the desktop and was also rumored to be working on making the Phoenix APUs available on the AM5 platform. Well, from the recent leak by Harukaze, it is now confirmed that AMD is indeed bringing the Ryzen 7040 Phoenix APUs to AM5 just before the end of this year. AMD will release Zen 4 based Ryzen 7000 CPUs that will feature Navi 3.0 AK RDNA 3 architecture for its integrated graphics. Currently, the desktop Ryzen 7000 lineup only comes with CPUs that feature RDNA 2 based i GPUs, so this is going to be a big jump in graphical performance. While some might think that these are the refreshed 7000 CPUs, I believe that these are Ryzen 7040 mobile chips that feature Zen 4 and RDNA 3 architectures on mobile platforms. Not only that, but the biggest leak here is of course the Ryzen 8000 series AKS Strix Point that is planned to launch next year. It will bring Zen 4 architecture for its CPUs and Navi 3.5 aka RDNA 3.5 architecture for its integrated graphics. If I'm not wrong, this is the first time we are hearing about RDNA 3.5 and as you can guess, it falls between RDNA 3 and RDNA 4 architectures and brings characteristics of both. As per Kepler, RDNA 3.5 will have the scalar ALU of RDNA 4 and will bring improvements to the geometry engine and the rest of the stuff is similar to RDNA 3. As for the CPU architecture, Paul from RGT has reported that Zen 5 is going to bring at least 90% higher IPC performance compared to Zen 4 and will feature core clocks as high as 6 GHz. This confirms the previous leaks about Zen 5 which confirmed that it will be at least 20-25% to faster than Zen 4 and that is definitely going to have a big impact on gaming performance. The Phoenix Point is already quite powerful when it comes to gaming as various benchmarks have shown that the Radeon 780M is able to match the performance of GTX 1650. And therefore with Zen 5 and RDNA 3.5 architectures on Strix Point, I won't be surprised if it brings at least 20% higher performance in gaming. And that means the iGPU on Ryzen 8000 CPUs will be able to max out most games at 1080p resolution which will easily replace most budget graphics cards that come under $200. I think that we can expect performance equivalent well into the RX 6500 XT which is quite cool if you think about it because Nvidia and AMD are no longer concerned about providing powerful gaming GPUs under $200. Before moving on, consider subscribing to the channel because I spent several hours collecting the best hardware news and leaks for you. This will help the channel immensely, especially when we are very close to the first 1000 subscribers. Now coming back, we have a very interesting finding from Chips and Cheese publication that conducted a test between the RX 7600 and the 79 XTX GPU looking for the differences in cache latency. Obviously, cache latency matters in GPUs too and surprisingly, the RX 7600 comes out to be better whether we analyze its cache latency in Infinity Cache or even in the VRAM. This graph shows the scalar access on both the GPUs where up until the L2 cache, the latency remains similar but as soon as the RX 7600 needs to access the data from its infinity cache, it can do quite quicker than the 7900 XTX which can take up to 58% more time. The story is similar when we consider the vector access where the 7900 XTX is roughly 18% slower in cache latency. Well, even though this difference looks huge, but in reality, we can't measure the impact of this latency difference in real-world performance as the 7900 XTX boasts significantly better specs and also has techniques like data prefetching to diminish the results of higher latency. However, this experiment does show the advantage of monolithic design in smaller GPUs, especially when it helps the company to reduce the GPU production cost. And talking about GPU production, TSMC is looking in a hurry to produce even smaller process nodes. As reported by Economic Daily, TSMC has just started the pre-production work for the 2 nanometer process node and will start mass production in 2025. This decision was made after the chip giant saw a growing demand from Nvidia and Apple as the recent boom in AI compelled companies like Nvidia to manufacture more powerful GPUs to handle the requests of its clients. 
However, TSMC's move for making a smaller node might be due to the upcoming 3 nanometer wafers by Intel. And since Nvidia is making a deal with Intel for data center GPUs, it seems quite obvious that TSMC doesn't want to remain behind in this competition. Meanwhile, this is also directly affecting the chip prices. And according to a recent report by Digitimes, TSMC is planning to raise the prices of its chips by up to 6% from the next year. It is the second time since TSMC increased the wafer cost by up to 20% in 2022, and this will definitely affect the GPU price prices in the future. The irony is that this comes at a time when the demand for GPUs is all-time low and people are not okay with paying premium prices for slower products. This has caused both AMD and Nvidia to lower their GPU prices and in this video you will find out how many GPUs are currently going on a discount. Lastly, if you found this video informative then give it a like and subscribe for more regular stories like these. Also make sure to turn on the notifications to get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you in the next one.